Hello, practicum students. My name is Chris Gibbons. I am the coordinator for the MHA program, the director for the HCA program, and I'm also the faculty member who will be facilitating your practicum experience in the master's program. In this series of videos, what I hope to do is to answer all of your questions about practicum. So please make sure you do watch all of the videos all the way through. And uh, again, if you have any questions, though, don't hesitate to reach out to me. I know that practicum can be kind of a confusing topic. So in this video, what I would like to discuss is really the foundation of practicum, kind of why are we all here anyway right now? And why did you have to register for this course? And then have you um, start on step one of your practicum process. All right, well, let's talk a little bit about that foundation. Why are you here? Uh, what is this thing all about? Some students need practicum, some don't. Again, why, why was this required of me? Well, going way back when, when you started the program, either myself or Dr. Watson, we interviewed you and we asked you a few questions about your healthcare leadership. Okay, and we define healthcare leadership pretty cut and dry. Either you have it or you don't, according to this definition. There is no uh, wiggle room, if you will, or subjectivity to it. So what we define as healthcare leadership is if you have ever, uh, at any time, it could have been 30 years ago, it could have been last year, been working in a healthcare environment and have had people report to you. You have had direct reports formally within the organization, organization structure, within your job description. Quite frankly, the easiest way to say, were you somebody's boss? Did you, you know, were you in charge of hiring people? Were you in charge of firing people? Were you in charge of their annual evaluations? You know, were you in charge of others? Pretty simple. You know, if you were a, a boss or not, and it's not, uh, again, a very formal, uh, very formal structure there. So after interviewing you, it was pretty, it was determined pretty clearly, hopefully that, you know, you either needed practicum or didn't need practicum. Obviously, if you're here, it was determined at that time that you needed practicum. Key phrases at that time, if something has changed and you become a manager, and you now have the pleasure of managing other people and all the wonderful things that come with managing other people, contact me and we can discuss whether practicum is still required for your plan of study. But for all the rest of you, let's assume that it is still required. You haven't changed your status at your job and it is a graduation requirement, is a requirement for your plan of study. Practicum is a course, HCA, 565 and is a total of three credit hours and we'll talk a little bit about how you can do those those three credit hours but what i want to discuss first in this video is really what you're doing in practicum i think that's important before you go to step two and figure about figure out how you want to do it so with practicum a little history again. Right now I'm shooting this video in the spring of 2020 and we're in the middle of the COVID season which will probably last for most of the year with various ramifications at least lasting for most of the year. The biggest ramification for you and this program is that we have canceled physical practicum for the entire year for 2020. Practicum still required, but that traditional experience where a student would go to a clinical site and spend that 120 hours at that practicum site working with a team or a preceptor directly, that's over with. Okay, so we're not doing that for 2020. And we quickly came upon another uh, another method for folks to complete practicum in another in a way that's as beneficial, if not, I'm kind of, I think it might actually be more beneficial uh, if done correctly. Obviously, you got to put into it what you want to get out of it. Um, but if it's done correctly, I think it could be even more to your benefit um, than uh, the traditional 
practicum. So what are you doing? I've said we can't go out and do physical practicum anymore where you're like an intern and working with somebody. We're doing what I'm calling field-based research. The operative word is field-based. Something that comes directly out of the field. Something real, a real thing that's happening in an area that you're interested in healthcare administration. Not something theoretical or something you read about. Something you're really going to discover out there and you're actually going to do something with. So I think that's where the, um, the exciting part of it is. It's, it's not just theoretical uh, exercise. It's hopefully going to be very real and maybe even lasting application of stuff that you're going to do. So field-based research. There are two paths that you can take for field-based research. And this is probably the most confusing choice that you'll have to make. So bear with me as I try to explain the two paths that you now are faced with. Path one is what we call path one. Path one will be a white paper. What is a white paper? Well, you can Google it, it's pretty easy. But a white paper is is basically uh, your, uh, your, you're operating like a consultant and you're producing a document. It's still a written document, but you're producing a document to solve a problem or discover an opportunity or how to, you know, leverage the business or, or whatnot. Okay. So you're actually, um, you're acting and I tell students this, pretend like you're a consultant and not even pretend you really are a consultant at this point and you're working on a problem or it could be, again, it doesn't necessarily have to be a problem. It could be an improvement. It could be a new, a new business line, new business opportunity that, that that's coming directly from the field. That idea is coming directly from real stuff. Okay. And we'll talk about how to get that idea in a, uh, in this video a little bit and more in other videos. So you're producing a, a white paper. White papers are also have the advantage in that they speak the bank, the language of business where APA papers do not speak the language of business. They speak the language of academics and, and I'll be honest with you. Most people, most business people are not going to read an APA style format paper. They are used to white papers. Tell me what I need to know. Tell me how we're going to solve my problem and cut out all the other junk. <laughs> you know, that's what business people want. Real actionable steps. And they've shown how you got to those actionable steps in your opinion about, um, based off of the evidence still, about what to do with their problem, their idea, the opportunity, the whatever. Again, that's what's really cool about white papers. Just go out and Google. You can check out some white papers. You'll learn more about white papers uh, in some modules following this, but there's that the white paper. You're producing a tangible thing, a document, many pages that addresses a real world problem opportunity out in the field. You will work with a mentor to identify that real world opportunity problem, what have you. And we'll talk about that mentor in step two. That's the one thing, the white paper. The other one is what I'm going to call field-based research project. Okay, so you've got white paper or you've got field-based research project. This is really a catch-all category to allow you latitude to do something else. Okay. The white paper is nice because it's very crisp and clean. We've got a focus. We know what you're doing. You can do it without any input from anyone. Once you have your initial idea, in most cases, it's, it's pretty much standalone. If you decide to do the other option, the project, the field-based project, it's going to require that your mentor, the person that you're going to identify that we'll talk about in step two, works with you in a lot more detail, a lot more time commitment on their behalf. 
it can still be just as powerful as the white paper if done correctly. Let me give you an example of, of what that project, what it could be. So one example is actually what's happening right now. We have a student who is working with her mentor on redeveloping uh, a completely new onboarding process for their organization. Okay, that's pretty cool. At the end of this, she will most likely have produced a, a new onboarding process that they are going to implement at the organization. Took some research, she had to figure out what's onboarding best practices, took some knowledge of the organization. Um, you know, she, luckily she works there. She had not a lot of knowledge of the organization, but if you don't work there, you got to learn about the organization and how things work for them. So there's a lot of, um, there's a lot more uh, connections that have to be made when you're working on a project, because you're going to also be working with that mentor much more closely. And remember, none of this can be physical. Okay. You cannot physically go to the site. Um, this is all done remotely, Zoom, phone calls, emails, what have you. But you're going to have to work with that mentor probably on a weekly basis if you decide to do the project. So the project is a little, let, a little bit less defined or has the opportunity to kind of go off the rails a little bit if you don't have a clear purpose in mind when you are talking to your mentor about that. But those are the two choices really that you that you have. One, white paper, pretty cut and dry, uh, very step by step. Doesn't take a lot of input from other people, just yourself. The other one is a field-based project done remotely. Will take a lot more input typically from your mentor to help you out, make sure you're on the right direction. But I didn't want to get rid of that opportunity for you because if it's if it's if the right opportunity presents itself it can be very very useful and beneficial to you okay so that's field-based research again we're going to talk about that in in some of the videos to uh that follow but at least you have a general understanding of what that is now before i'm going to close out just one thought with this whole practicum experience Again, remember that we're just not requiring you to take this class to get extra credit hours for you. The hope is at the end of this, this allows you advantage in the workplace. So as you're having these discussions with mentors, as you're thinking about ideas about what to do, think of it through that lens. What do I need to get out of this? What do I want to use to help differentiate myself from other people that can separate you know, me from the crowd you know, with new opportunities or advancements? So think, think about it like that. Don't think about it as I just need to check this box off to get this course done. You know, that is probably not the best way to, to approach it. Yes, you could do that. You could be successful in the course, get it done, but what you produce out of it may be less meaningful if you go into it the other way. Again, thinking, I'm going to use this time, this 120 hours, to actually work on something that's going to help me uh, move my career forward. Imagine this. So you're sitting in an interview. Let's say it's a year from now. You've graduated, and you've done a white paper. <clears throat> you've done a white paper on improving patient satisfaction in your area. Maybe it's like my, I'll pick my area, medical imaging. So you've done this white paper on improving uh, satisfaction, patient satisfaction scores in medical imaging departments. You have this wonderful white paper, which will be pretty robust actually. So, and you're sitting in an interview and you're going for manager of department uh, and you're talking to the manager and and you know how interviews are and, and you get to, you know, what are some of the, you know, the problems that they have? And you say, you know, we really need to get our patient satisfaction scores up. Uh, or maybe you bring it up during the interview, the, the conversational part of the interview. And they, they go, yeah, you know, we always, you know, we, 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 we definitely always, and everybody's going to say this little pick on patient satisfaction scores. We can always improve our patient satisfaction scores. Well, you know, it's funny you should say that because I actually um, presented a white paper uh, on that. 
uh, for medical imaging. And I'd love to share that with you at the conclusion of this interview. I can send that to you. Um, I can email that to you if you like. Oh, really? Wow. And then they get this wonderful white paper from you showing about how you can solve all their problems in this one area. And then they see you as a problem solver. They don't see you for, they don't see you as someone who needs to be spoon fed an answer, you know, and, that, and there are so many people that are that way. You can say, look, I know how to approach problems and solve them. Here is direct evidence of me doing that in this white paper. The white paper also could be leveraged uh, in we're trying to think of some other ways you may even be able to submit it for publication. Again, that may be a little bit more difficult, but that's something that's not so outside of the realm. And we're even thinking um, of a way of, of maybe putting a repository of our student white papers on the internet. So then they could be, they might even come up in Google searches. So how cool would that be that your name came up under a Google search in a particular, er particular area? Again, emphasizing you are an expert in a certain area and you have demonstrable evidence that you're an expert in there. And that's what the white paper can do pretty cleanly and clearly. Not to say that the projects, the project part thing that you can do, that um, can be very powerful uh, as well, especially if you're looking at advancement within your own company, you're you maybe implementing something and uh, you know you obviously will hopefully gain the favor and appreciation of uh, those that can help your career within uh, your organization it can be extraordinarily powerful as well. Um, but as I said a couple of times, you got to put into this what you hope to get out. All right, so that's the end of step one. So hopefully you understand why you got here, what we're doing with, and you know what brought you to practicum. That's a graduation requirement, and kind of what you're going to be doing uh, for that 120 hours. All right, make sure you watch the rest of the steps uh, videos that follow after this one. Thanks.